Welcome to Off Our Needles. We're the Grocery Girls. I'm Jody, And I'm Tracy. And today is our Loose Ends episode. What does that mean? That means we're gonna talk about amazing knitting things that are just kind of, they don't really fit into our other episodes, but they're awesome. And you were really gonna to wanna to know about them. Let's get knitting. Let's do it. So how was your week? Okay, I could tell you, yes, everything was great, but can we just get real for a minute here? Yes. I feel like we are in a group age-wise where things are yeah. kind of going sideways in life. Quickly. Like, what? Yeah. yeah. I feel like I wake up every morning and there's a new chin hair. And they grow overnight. No, well, no, I'm pretty sure it's every two hours. Yeah. Like you should walk around with tweezers. Yes. And we're talking about the big M word, the M menopause. We need a better word for it, first of all. But the other day I had this super dry skin. So I go to the store and I buy this fabulous face mask and it's gonna you know, change my life overnight. Yeah. Put it on, wipe it off, go to sleep, wake up in the morning, total rash, that the entire sad. face. That's hysterical. How am I supposed to go on with my life? <laughs> These last two weeks, I've been waking up two or three times a night completely drenched in sweat. I know. I used to live in flannel pajamas. Yeah. I have about 30 pairs in my drawer. I can't wear, like I have to change once I'm ready to go to sleep. Which I love, we're Canadian. I love flannel all winter long. I know, me too. I feel like my body's on fire. Literally, I feel like you can see flames shooting out of my skin. I know, but So anyway, anyway we've got to like roll with it and just get on with life. But it is, a, I honestly, I feel like I'm a different person every day. An apple doll? An apple doll, yeah. Today. <laughs> An apple doll. <laughs> okay, so up next, it's everything totally soft. Which I love. Me too. So we're completely obsessed with sock knitting. Yeah, obsessed. All socks, all the time. It's crazy. Today, I want to talk to you about a sock that I've just finished. I loved knitting this sock. I do love that. It sock. has a little bit of everything. It's called the Laurel Hurst sock, and it's by Star Athena. And I use the amazing Cloudborn Merino Superwash Sock Twist yarn for this in two colors. And this yarn is like next to skin. It's so nice. So, yeah, I it's love beautiful. It. So I'm a total gray girl. I love the Grello. There's the gray and the yellow too. happening here. In it's the like a mustardy yellow though. I love it. And so it is a top down sock. You start with a small lace pattern that's very simple. I would say yeah. this is really a nice, simple lace pattern. Is and it then, because I won't knit it if it's difficult? Yeah, no, it is totally. It's got a very nice chart and it's just a few rows to repeat. So is it's it only a, a chart? Yes, it is only a chart. Only a chart, okay. Yeah. And then, and then you move into this just striping, kind of a stockinette vanilla sock. Because you're doing a little bit of a slip stitch, you get this super cool line, right? You get like a little stripe going this way as well. You've got yeah. the horizontal and this so vertical stripe. So you don't stripe. get that little jog you normally get when you, you change. Don't. Let yeah, me I tell you, that. you don't have to worry about jogless stripes with this one. The slip stitch yeah. camouflages that and you just go. Because even with a jogless stripe, there is a teeny weeny. Yeah. No, you this is way it. easier than that. The only yeah. thing you're worrying about on here is to be a little bit loose when you change your colors at the start of every round. Yeah. But I'll show you a little tip about that. And then you get into your heel flap, which is so cute. I think if I was to do this sock, I would do it solid. That'd be gorgeous. I don't love color work. Yeah, perfect accommodation, because if you don't love it, yeah. skip it. Just yeah. do it in a solid color. And then you just continue the stockinette foot, and then at the very end, you've got a contrast toe. Well done. Isn't it pretty? Yes. I love knitting this. So let me show you some of the things that I did in the sock. So one of the first things I want to show you is, is in regard to carrying your yarns at the same time throughout the sock. So this is a good little tip. When you're using both yarns, make sure that you, when you change your yarn, it's significantly looser because you don't want a real tight edge going up the side of your sock. In the pattern, it requires you to slip the yarn color that you're not using. So I, my last round was gray. So I'm going to start with my yellows. And what you do is you put your old color over the new color. So gray is gonna go over the yellow and that just twists your yarn up the inside of your sock. And I'm going to slip the gray stitch and just start knitting. But when you do that, just make sure that this first stitch in the yellow is loose and it's gonna feel strange and look a little bit weird. But as you come around the next round, it's going to be nice and loose and your stitches will be not so tight up the side of your sock and that'll make a nice, nicer fitting sock. You said this part was tricky. Well, I think the purling part is a little trickier than the knitting part. Okay. I, I, I feel like the knitting's not as tricky. Okay. So what we do on the heel flap is you're knitting with two colors at the same time. Some people knit, you know, with, with using one hand and then alternating the colors, but yeah. I'm gonna show you today how I knit using 
both colors in different hands. So I'm always going to be knitting the yellow stitches with the yellow yarn to create your stripe. And I've got the yellow yarn in my right hand, which is typically how I knit. I'm an English style knitter. And then my yarn is in the, my gray is in the left hand. And so this you end up doing, it's what's called picking. So it's definitely not my comfort zone, but the knitting I find much easier. So you just sort of alternate the throwing and then the picking. I would still be doing my heel if I was doing that. Well, like you said earlier, you would just do it with a solid color. I and would. that's still gonna yeah. be a gorgeous sock. Yeah. But this is But that that does add a little something for the And the, you know just two color. Yeah. yeah. And you know when you're doing this, just keep in mind that you want to remain loose because all whenever you do color work, it's automatically tightens up your stitches. You don't want your heel flap to be super narrow and too snug and not fit properly. Just some nice loose stitches like this all the way across. But you could throw with your yellow, drop the yellow, then yes. throw with your gray. You yes, don't you need can. to do one in each hand. There's okay. very many ways to do this. Some people are able to do it with both colors on the one finger and alternate it that like having them both like this. Yes. Yeah. I've never learned how to do that. You know, use the one that you're comfortable with. It's going to make the same looking sock. Right. No right? one's going to know how you did no it. No one's going to know how you did yeah. it. Well done. Yeah, this is no big deal. Just like that. And I've got one more thing to show you at the end of your sock, the Kitchener stitch. So this is the very end of your sock. You're a rock star, you've almost finished, you've got one more step and this is it. It's called the Kitchener stitch or sometimes in a pattern, it'll be called graft, graft, yeah. graft your stitches together. This is one of my favorite parts of the sock. I love Kitchener stitch. A lot of people avoid it. Yeah, it's just so seamless. It is. You're actually weaving in another row of knitting. Yeah. That's what you're doing here and you're never going to feel, you know, you could do something called a three needle bind off. That'll leave a seam and it'll feel really weird. I don't yeah. like that. So I'm going to show you today Kitchener stitch the way I do it and it's just super quick and easy and you're done. Then your sock's finished. Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to have your stitches on two parallel needles. You've got 10 stitches is what I've got here, maybe 12, on each needle. And the working yarn is going to be coming off the back needle. That's how it works, right? Yeah. So you take your tapestry needle and thread your yarn on it. And you bring your needle to the front and you knit this first stitch. So you put it through just like your knitting needle as if you were going to knit, just like that. And you pull this stitch off your needle, just like that. And then you take this same needle in the front and go into the second stitch as if you were going to purl. And you leave that stitch on the needle. So you're gonna work from the front needle to the back and back and forth all the way down. So we're gonna go to the back and this one, we purl it and take it off just like that. And then knit it and leave it on. So those four things I do the whole way. That's knit, it. Knit on, purl, you know, like yeah. knit off, purl off. I so, say it. So yeah, whole. we could do a little, so you, you tell me how you do it. So this one's knit. Knit off. Off. Purl on. Purl on. And that's your front needle. And then purl off. Yeah. Knit on. Purl off. And I just off. say that over and over in knit my head until I'm done. on. Exactly. Yeah. And so what, that's what you're doing. You're weaving your yarn through, mimicking another row of knitting. And it's really just binding off your stitches and you're finishing your sock. Yeah. And it's super quick and easy. It's one of those things I had to look up several times. Yeah. But, you know, it becomes ingrained in your brain, right? And so I could do this anywhere now. I could do this like on a plane with kids talking to me, TV on, whatever. I don't have to think about it much anymore because I, you know, knit a gajillion socks. And I do love cuff down, which means I kitchener every pair. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're finished this, you are done. Your sock is finished. Weave in a few ends and yeah. where, yeah. You bet, weave in that one little end and then you're done. So that's it, I'm just gonna finish these last few stitches, weave in an end and I'm done. You finished a sock, right? You're a rock star, I love sock knitting. Yeah. Yeah, and coming up next, we're gonna show you some amazing favorite things. This is my favorite. I know, I love it. Yeah. So today, my favorite thing yes. is project bags that I use all the time for my knitting, yeah. and it's Mrs. Brown's bags. So I feel like they're very unique and very special because every fabric is made of a knitted swatch. It actually started out that way. Yeah, so this is what I do to start my bags. I knit a swatch out of bulky yarn and then photograph it. And, and there's, you, yeah. there's tons of websites that you can upload your photograph material. Anything, yeah. I mean, you can photograph literally anything. I love it. And I love that you highlight Indie Dyers. Yeah. 
So you've got so many different, and we should say you are Mrs. Brown of Mrs. Brown's Fegs, which is really, really fun. And I know you're my sister. I'm not picking these because you're my sister. Well, a I'm little picking, bit. No, well, I don't know. I honestly, Jody, I absolutely I said, can love you pick them. my bags for your favorite thing? I think you should be Mrs. Brown's pajamas because I would like pajamas made out of yeah. this fabric. Uh, you know the funny thing? I have had this fabric printed on fleece. Well, fabulous. I know. Although now with my menopause, I can't do fleece, I know. but whatever. Okay, so I wanted to bring this sample, sample just to show you how it sort of translates. So this is the bulky sample that I knit. Okay. And then photographed. And block, knit, block, yeah. photograph. Okay. And then uploaded it. And so it doesn't translate great. I mean, I don't have professional lighting. I don't right. have all that professional yes. equipment. But I love how it turns out. I do too. I do and too. I really love, you get amazing stitch definition. Yeah, you do. And tons of colors. That's what excites me when I use these. I know, I love. I love all the yarns and all the colors. So yeah. I do have a crazy amount of them and I love them all the time. I use them every single day. So there you They're go. Fun. One of my favorite things. Thank you. Mrs. Brown's bag. They are fun. Yeah. Okay. So one of my favorite things is no surprise that it's yarn. Yarn. Yeah. And we love hand painted, hand dyed yarns. Yes. And Lorna's laces is a favorite thing because look at it. And the nice thing about Lorna's laces, it comes in several different weights. Yeah. This one's really exciting because it's a collaboration. Yeah. Between Lorna's laces and Cloudborn. Yeah. Which is so cool. Okay, but look at the colors. I know. Okay, so I just want to start by showing you, I mean, look at the, this is how ha happens to be her superwash merino and this is her worsted. But Look I mean, at the speckles. Look at that. When that you, is exciting. When you open that. Oh my God, I love that. I look at that and I think. Yeah. I want a hat, I want a sweater. Yeah. It's perfect for all that stuff. I mean, we are crazy about indie dyers. Yes. And we love what they do. And I feel this is exactly that, but readily available. Yeah. And so Lorna's Laces is well known for like these variegated types where yeah. there's blocks of color. Yeah. And then these are super exciting because there's, you know, now they've incorporated all the speckles. Yeah. So look at that one. These single, these single, so this is a different base again. This is the Superwash Merino fingering, but it is a single ply. It's not yeah. a twisted yarn and yeah. I think those are fabulous for shawls. Okay, crazy about single ply and I just want to show you a little bit of the difference. Where is that one that was, okay, that was the variegated. That, these one, this one and that one yeah. were the same group of colors but different dye techniques. Yeah. So, yeah. so what they've done with these two specifically that I just opened yeah. is they've color blocked this and you're going to get a very different effect knitting this, mm -hmm. then you're gonna get, so this is the speckled and then this would be the variegated. And yet you could use it for like a two color shawl. Absolutely. Or three, look at yeah. this teal, like this would go yes. absolutely perfectly with it. And then this one, this is another variegated one. So this is very exciting. I Crazy. love a great yarn. I yeah. love a great collaboration. I can see why you're excited about this one. Love That's an awesome laces. favorite thing. Yeah. I have another favorite thing. Okay. When I'm sitting and knitting, I'm often watching YouTube. Yeah. And once in a while, I am not watching knitting on the YouTube. Uh, I, one of my other favorite things is carpool karaoke. Okay, I'm in Corden. love with James Corden. James Corden, stop yeah. it. Stop it, already, you had me at James Corden. And then he's sitting in his car and he picks up a celebrity yeah. singer, usually, and they drive around singing that person's songs and a whole bunch of songs. And it's joyful, like you can't he's watch a, this. He's actually a good singer. He's a great singer, he's a musical theater guy. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he is. Okay, I didn't know that. So, you know, they drive around and they sing all these songs, and if you're in the worst mood ever, you need to turn on carpool karaoke. I know. Some of my favorites are Michelle Obama. Yeah. Love that one, because she's got Missy Elliott in the back seat. Yeah. What else did you love? I love Unlikely Pair. I love it. Totally. He had One Direction filling up the car one yeah. time. He has Adele. Adele. Was so that good. was one of my tippy top favorites. Yeah. Anyway, he's he's amazing. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah. He makes it fabulous. So that's a happy, happy favorite thing. Yeah. Okay, I have one more favorite thing. Okay. Okay. Clover stitch markers were the very first stitch markers I ever used. These are the locking ones though. These They're are locking my stitch markers. Yeah. And there's several great things about this and the reason why I use this. Number one is they're locking. You're not going to lose them off your knitting at yeah, all. I agree. It's not totally. going to be a clip where it can just come off and that's happened several times to me before. Mm -hmm. So these come in a little package and you've got different sizes. These are the medium size ones. Yeah. And you get two different colors, but you get a whole handful, 20 pieces in here. It's still never enough. I think my couch eats them. I know that I everywhere. lose them all the time. But every time I, I sweep. I keep buying them. Yeah. yeah, they're amazing. So this little stitch marker, you just clip it anywhere on your needle. You can use it as a progress keeper. Yep. Or you can use it as a stitch marker as you're knitting around if you need to mark the beginning of a round or yep. if you need to uh, mark a lace, lace 
you know, pattern yeah. repeat that you want to know where you're starting and stopping. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that I didn't know they had and that is new to me yes. are these. Yeah. So these are larger locking stitch markers, but they've also got a little clip on the front. Yeah, right here. So I think these are for more complicated type of projects. Yeah. And you get these little pieces of paper that are perforated and you can clip them. You can write on there, maybe you're doing a super cabled sweater. Yeah. And it, it, you can have it marking the certain area where the cable is and you can write the cable there. So instead yeah. of going back to the chart every time. I love that. You've got your instruction right there. I think I, that's genius. I think that's genius. Yeah. I do love that. Yeah, and it's certainly not going to come off your knitting because no, they, lock, it's locking. they lock. Yeah, yeah. These are ingenious. These are. There's no substitute. No, I this do think This is the thing. Smart. This is the thing. Yeah. yeah, love it. Okay, so those are just a few of our favorite things we're sharing this week. And up next, hey, did you see this? Oh, you're gonna love it. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to show you guys a few nitty things that we think you might have missed. Yeah, these are really cool. I love these. Yeah. So knitcrate.com had a great article on celebrities who knit. I know. There's a lot. I know. Well, and I mean, my kids are pretty sure this is the nerdiest thing on the globe yeah, I know. to do. So I get a huge thrill out of seeing cool kids knitting. Totally. Yeah. Although I'm not sure if some of them are, they knit, yeah. or it's for a movie Oh role. no, I believe that they're all knitting. I'm going to believe that they're all knitting. I saw George Lucas on the set of a movie knitting. And okay, so for sure him. Oh, that looked, looked totally yeah. legit. Yeah. Uh, another one that really excited me was the Christopher Walken, while well, he's fake knitting a sweater in that commercial, but I know, loved, but loved. it's funny. We get a kick out of that. Yeah, and Kate Middleton wanted to knit a baby blanket. Of so course she did. I love that. She's I love perfect. seeing those things. She's, yeah, right? Everything's she farts perfect. sparkles. Yes. Okay, so um, <laughs> Ashton Kutcher was another one. I know. Okay, I love that. And a lot of men. I mean, a lot of women. I think people, when they think about knitting, it's yeah. it's predominantly women. Well, Julia Roberts has been Women known, and gay men. Well, fabulous, right? Like, yes. how much better can it be? Yeah. But um, Julia Roberts, big time knitter for She's many, been a many long years, like knitter. sweaters, the whole deal. Yeah. And who else was on there? Kristen Davis, Sex in the City. I mean, yeah. that's really fun. Okay, Kurt Cobain, crocheting. I know, I know. I think everybody should check this out. Who knew? It makes us knitters feel kind of cool. Yeah, I know. Right? Even though we totally know we are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing that I thought was really, really awesome, I was traveling in the fall and I came across this really neat little farm in Italy. Yeah. And it was cashmere goats. Well, when you're that close, you think, well, I got to make the drive and go see what a cashmere goat actually looks like because I love knitting with cashmere. I know. Right? So they're adorable. I love goats. Yeah. yeah. And I got there expecting this to be a big Italian operation. It's actually an American lady yeah. that came to Italy in the 70s. And her farm is really, really special because it's all this organic farming. And she is certified wildlife friendly. What does that mean? It, there's a whole, I mean, you have to be very, very, you know, humane farming and okay. all of these stipulations. I don't yeah. think it's easy to get certified yeah. that way. And so when I went there, they had a beautiful gift shop. She's got local weavers that weave amazing yeah. things and all these knitted things. And so I had to buy some yarn. So this was my souvenir, one of my But souvenirs. you can adopt a goat. You can go to the website and help support her organic farming yeah. and her wildlife friendly. And you can adopt a goat. You don't goat. actually get the goat. I was quite excited. I've always I wanted know. a goat. You don't actually get the goat in the mail. And she's got a beautiful website. I encourage you to go just check out the website anyway. But this is natural cashmere. And they comb it right off the goat. And uh, I love it. I thought it was really exciting. I know, that's really fun. Yeah, so adopting a kid cashmere goat. I thought that was cool. That is fun. Yeah, hey, did you see that? Thanks so much for watching today. We had so much fun on our Loose Ends episode. I know. It was all these fun bits and bobs that we yep. just thought you guys had to see. And we gave you tons of information. So if you would like to know about any of the things we were chatting about, click the I in the corner or check out the description box below. And if you liked our video, hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Yes. And leave us a comment. We would love to hear from you guys. We would. So we'll see you next time on Off Our Needles. Bye. Bye.